Welcome back to Bachelor Nation's favorite podcast. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe here and follow us on Instagram at E and G Podcast. Available now are previous episodes with Bachelor favorites, including Luke Pell, Ashley Iconetti, Robbie Hayes, Leah Block, and much more. Plus, this season with Nick, we're bringing you weekly recaps, Bachelorette interviews, and exclusive offers from friends of the podcast. Thanks for listening. You, you, E and G, you guys are getting out there, man. You guys are, you guys are diligent. I'd say with Lace, it's dicks over chicks. 100% of the time. No, I wanted her to be happy. And what choice that was, uh, was up to her. I'm busy. I'm in it to minute. <laughs> yeah, I just love them. They're so fun. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Ian. Today's episode of the E&G Podcast is sponsored by our good friends at Clothing by Owl. All you Bachelor fans will recognize this name as they are the company behind the hugely popular Wine Bachelor and Yoga Pants tank top. What you may not know is that they give back a percentage of every item sold to Animal Rescue and that notable Bachelor alums like Jojo Fletcher, Caitlin Bristow, Lauren Bushnell, Ben Higgins, and Nick Vale are all huge supporters. We're happy to offer our listeners 20% off when you visit clothingbyowl.com. Simply add the discount code ENG, that's E-A-N-D-G, to save on all your Bachelor gear. And be sure to follow them on social media at Clothing by Owl. Jeff and I are doggy dads, which is why we're so excited to be partnering with our newest sponsor, Puppies Make Me Happy. They have a super simple mission, to make the happiest clothes on earth, which they do. And we know our listeners will love this brand just as much as we do. Plus, we're excited to help spread a little happiness ourselves by offering listeners 20% 20% off all merchandise by using discount code ENG. That's E A N D G at checkout. Make sure to follow them on Instagram at Puppies Make Me Happy. Welcome back to the ENG podcast. We have another special interview podcast with the one and only Grant Kemp. You know him from JoJo season of The Bachelorette. You know him from Bachelor in Paradise. You know him as Grace from Grant and Lace. Uh, Ian, that was a good, he had a time constraint, he had to go to a meeting, so we had a really good power-packed interview. Yeah, man, we squeezed it in. We've been chatting with Grant for for months, <laughs> so we finally were able to make it happen. Grant is a very, very cool guy, super genuine dude. It was good to get his perspective after having had the chance to speak and meet Lace in person, and I think listeners are definitely going to be interested to kind of hear his take on how it all went down his feelings on Chad, his feelings on some of the guys from his season, the tattoo, the engagement, um, a lot of topics, man. It was a quick one, but I think we covered a lot of ground. Yes, and I am using my mute button now, so there should be less sniffling on my end. (laughs) I was unaware of the mute button, but hopefully it worked out. And uh, yeah, dude, it was a really good interview. And also, we want to make sure everyone, because there's a hater out there who gave us less than five stars. And, you know, we don't care. We take the good with the bad. Motherfucker! Uh, (laughs) We'd really appreciate... If you went on iTunes, if you listen to our podcast, take a quick, it takes 30 seconds, just rate us five stars. If you can leave a review, it doesn't have to be a long review, you could say loved it, say great podcast, whatever. Uh, Something short and sweet, but uh, if you take the time out, just uh, give us a quick little rating. And uh, I think this is, yeah, it's it's not as long as some of our other interviews, but we did cover a lot of ground. So. Yeah, man. It's like, I'll just, I would echo what you just said. It really does only take a moment to rate it five stars. Even if you don't leave a review, the rating of five stars certainly helps on iTunes. And, you know, hey, we're going to keep bringing you guys interviews and content and reviews all season and recaps, rather, all season um, with Nick. And we're excited to do it. This has been a ton of fun. There's been a lot of drama so far. Um, we just posted our interview with Liz, right? Elizabeth Sandos. And so I think everybody's going to enjoy that one. And we appreciate you guys. Thanks for all the support. I'd like to echo your echo. And if you guys would just rate us five stars. <laughs> I would all like right. to echo your echo. All right, enjoy, guys. The, enjoy this interview, guys. Are you guys there? Yes, sir. Yes. Can you hear okay. us? Yes. Perfect, man. What's up, Grant? How's your day going, dude? Um, it's going very well. Um, I am, I'm on my way into L.A. right now for some meetings. Um, and there you go. Yeah. I mean, everything. Everything's been awesome. Awesome, man. Yeah, no, hey, we appreciate you making time. This is Ian, and I just wanted to kick off, I guess, 
looking back, right, to where it all started yeah. with JoJo yeah. and uh, your yeah. journey into <laughs> being on the show. We like to ask people, like, what was what was that process like? Did someone submit for you? Had you watched The Bachelor previously before becoming a part of it? Dude, so yeah, the the only time I really watched The Bachelor was when you know I would be dating a girl or something like that, and I'd see like bits and pieces of it, and and uh, I always thought it was interesting. I mean, it was surely entertaining, you know. And I uh, the way I kind of stumbled upon the show was like I I had just done a, a commercial actually, and I was looking at castings online, and like I got off the website and I clicked this link, and I found the website for the bachelorette and i was like i'm just gonna throw my name in real quick this was like 9 30 at night at the fire station i was just messing around okay and i ended up getting a call the next day and i was like this is like are you serious like this has to be a prank call and then i realized i didn't tell anybody i applied and i was like oh I'll, maybe i should call him <laughs> back you know and totally. then yeah like a week later like i flew down to la and and then i i, I interviewed and then i was on the show like a, literally like a month later like they were finished with casting and they ended up just throwing me on the show so that's how it happened for me it's kind of a haphazard way of ending up on a on a show but yeah that's that's how it happened definitely man well the journey's fast right i mean i think we've yeah. heard that from a number of people it's like once they have their eyes on you and they tab you is like yep yeah. you're gonna be on the show yeah. it's quick so yeah yeah crazy no man so we also want to ask you too so you mentioned this was at the time when you were still a firefighter are you still a firefighter now or are you doing just modeling yeah. and trying to get into acting what's yeah. what's your life been yeah. like yeah, I'm still a firefighter, man. Um, I, I split my time between obviously the Bay Area where I work as a firefighter in L.A. Um, so I, I only work a certain number of shifts every month, which allows me to, you know, spread myself out, you know, a lot. Um, and I'm, I'm very grateful for that because there's not a lot of jobs where you have as much time off as I do, you know. So definitely. Yeah. Flexibility awesome. is nice. Absolutely. Yeah. Grant, Absolutely. so this is Jeff. So you mentioned that when you submitted yourself for the show, you had just done a commercial. Yeah. So, you, so you've already kind of, I mean, I know I have some firefighter friends. I, I know what you're saying about having yeah. the time off. So you, you've all, you were already kind of into modeling and acting and stuff? Yeah, I mean, I, I started modeling when I was 17 and I modeled for like a year until I was about 18. And then I quit just because, you know, I didn't, I didn't really like the industry and I wanted to go to school and all that sort of stuff. And and I, I got back into it um, a couple years ago, actually. I started doing fitness modeling, and then I, I transitioned back into regular modeling. And so, yeah, I mean, I've, I've always I've always had a little bit of a hand in that, um, but I kind of had just recently gotten back into it. So Well, that's cool. Um, as yeah. far as when you were on JoJo season, uh, we always yeah. like to ask, especially with the guys, it's a lot different. We talked to a lot of the girls who are on The Bachelor and – a lot of them yeah. are like, we're all friends. Everyone was so great. But the guy, I mean, dudes are different. <laughs> so who, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously everyone talks about Chad from your season. But like who in the house are you Are you still close with? Who maybe rubbed you the wrong way? Who maybe came across one way on TV but in real life is not that way? Can you talk about that a little? You know what? Um, some of the guys that, that I'm still – cool with from from my season i definitely still talk to Vinny. um i talked to evan from time to time i haven't talked to him in a while um i'm cool with robbie um and it's funny that that robbie and i are cool now because there's actually um like robbie and i got into it when we were in uruguay in, in south america but it got edited out of the show and we got into this huge argument wow um because of like some some things that were exchanged that were kind of like misunderstood and everybody was just super stressed out and it was kind of a fight that happened for no reason but um yeah i mean it was it was it was kind of interesting to see like the animosity that we had towards each other while we were on the show and then we we ended up passing it out on the show so we were cool um at that point but i mean yeah, I mean that's, it was. It, it's a very interesting situation to be in when like yeah. you're trying to date the same girl. Like obviously someone's gonna get pissed off at somebody, or if not everybody, you know. So, I mean, we were we were definitely able to take a step back and say like, hey, you know, this is, you know, this isn't worth fighting over. That's kind of interesting know? on a couple of levels because yeah. why would they not include that in the show? That sounds interesting. Two guys, you know, every time like somebody doesn't like somebody, they seem yeah, to include it. Yeah, I mean. I, I, I really I was really surprised that it got edited out of the show. I mean, it was I mean, obviously, I went home like later that week. And so, I mean, I think that uh, I'm not I don't know. I just I was that's one of the things that surprised me the most that that in post that that got cut out of the show, you know. Right. Well, we're going to get into paradise in a second, but I just want, I'm still wanting to talk about 
It's interesting because obviously Ian and I watch the show now because we do the podcast. So we make sure we watch all the yeah, shows. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's so funny because I watch with my wife and you see these girls and they're all competing for the same guy. But women are so different. They'll like <laughs> yeah. a girl will break so down. Different. Yeah. And then so, another girl will take yeah. her aside and go, are you okay? What's up? And you'll never yeah. see that with a bunch of dudes. Never, never, never. So yeah, and it's it's yeah, they're they're women are a lot more passive when it comes to like situations like this as opposed to guys. Like guys I feel like at least, you know, things will just escalate quickly and then you'll figure it out. With girls it's like this ongoing thing and she'll say five things behind, you know, the other chick's back and then she'll hear about it in a roundabout way and then it's even more drama than it has to be, you know? Right. What um what what is that like? That's gotta be so weird as a guy. Cause I mean I pretty much get along with everybody, but if I was stuck in a house Yeah. With a bunch of dudes, you're all going for the same girl. Obviously, there's like that yeah. weird bio- biology aspect of it of just yeah, like yeah. being an alpha male. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. So w- I mean, it's. Go ahead. Yeah, it's for me. Luckily, since I'm a firefighter, obviously, I'm used to being in a house with a bunch of guys all the time, right? So there's a certain dynamic, and there's a certain level of like you know, thick skin that that you acquire from being in that environment all the time, right? Most guys aren't used to that. Like, you know, they're not used to having to live with a bunch of guys and deal with different personalities and stuff in stressful situations. Like, that's basically what I do for a living, you know? So, for me, I was very level-headed and calm and logical throughout the whole thing. Like, I didn't let a lot of stuff get to me because it wasn't worth my time, you know? Other people, I mean, if you're not used to that, you're going to get wrapped up in things and you're going to overreact and you're sleep-deprived and you're drunk and you're emotional. So... For me, it it really wasn't that different than, you know, everyday life with with stress levels and and, and dealing with, like, a lot of different personalities, you know? Right. And so, real quick, we just got to ask, and you don't need to spend a lot of time on it, but how do you feel about um, Chad? Is he as, like, bad as they made him look on TV? Because I've talked to some people that know him, and and they don't know him from being on the show with him like you, but they met him at uh, stuff, and they're like, yeah, he's, like, a super nice guy. I think it's all a show. Did they just kind of play up that angle? Yeah. I mean, I think that um, when he went on JoJo season, right, he was he was himself, you know, and I think that he kind of from the get go realized how emotional he could get a lot of these guys to be towards him. And he fed off that and he was like, I'm going to work this angle. Right. And that's exactly what he did. You know, so I think that. You know, if if he's in that type of environment and he knows he can keep people entertained by making people flip out, like he's going to do it. You know, I I see why why he does it. But in reality, you know, it's like even when I was on Jojo season with him, you know, I definitely had some conversations with him that were very logical and he's a normal dude. You know, it's just that if you put him in the situation where he can rile a bunch of guys up, he will, you know. Absolutely. I mean, he played the game. Right. I mean, he yeah, saw exactly. it as an opportunity and he played the game. What did you think, yeah. Grant, about your portrayal on the show, not only on The Bachelor, but also in Paradise? I mean, editing is such a big part of the show. Did you feel like they kind of captured who you are as a person? Yeah, I mean, um, obviously on JoJo season, I was a little bit more low key um, due to the fact that I didn't react to a lot of stuff. So less reaction equals less camera time, right? Um, exactly. If exactly. they're not reacting to stuff, they're not going to focus on it because that's not entertaining, you know? So, um, I mean, I think I think the way that I got edited represented, you know, who, who I am as a person for the most part. Um, obviously, you know, when you're, when you're on TV and there's like 13 million people watching every episode, like there's certain things that you're obviously not going to say. There's certain things you're obviously not going to do. Um, if you care about, you know, your, your image and your, and your brand. And I mean, I think when you hear people saying like, Oh, I got a bad edit. Like they screwed me over. Like, no, like they didn't screw you over because like you said it, like you said it, you did it and they caught it on camera. So it's like, it's one of those things where there's people try and kind of use that as a crutch to like defend the fact that they made a fool of themselves on tv right (laughs) so i mean it's it's one of those things where i mean yes there can be you know they can add some music in there to make you look sort of stupid or they can they can have you know a long pause you know drawn out to make something look more awkward or or whatever right but at the end of the day you said it and you did it yeah (laughs) yeah i mean they take it doesn't matter if 
yeah, like if they splice it into something to make it seem more intense, like you still did it. Like, you know what I mean? It still happened. So absolutely. I mean, they take one part of your personality, they blow it up. They don't necessarily yeah. show the full picture. So, I mean, that's a totally yeah. fair point. And one of the things yeah. too, so getting into paradise, I guess, first and foremost, what made you want to go to paradise? Um, you know what, what, what made me want to go to paradise was the fact that like, when I went on Jojo season, I actually, I actually did have strong feelings for her, you know, and I did like the, the process of the whole thing did actually work for me. Obviously, you know, it didn't work out for me since I got sent home, but at the same time, I, I got a feel for how things actually work. And then I saw paradise as a chance to spend a lot more time with somebody, right? You can spend all day on the beach with somebody in paradise. Whereas, you know, if you're on the bachelorette, like if you're not on the date, you're stuck in the house with a bunch of assholes that you don't want to hang out with because you're all dating (laughs) the same girl, you know? Totally. Totally. Different experience. That's why I wanted to do it, you know? And, um, I obviously, you know, the situation that I got myself into in paradise led to something that did not end up working out by any means. But at the same time, I don't regret doing it because, um, it definitely speeds up getting to know somebody. It forces you to open up. It forces you to figure out who they actually are as a person way faster than you would if you were dating them in the real world where, you know, it's like if you're, if for, this is a perfect example, right? Like you meet somebody at a bar, you get their number, you wait two days to text them. It's like, you don't want to seem thirsty. And then you start texting. You might see them once like a week later. And then they're out of town and you're out of town and then you see them again a week after that. And like three months goes by and like, you don't even know their middle name. Exactly. I mean, and I I I bet you get a chance to learn a lot about yourself too in the process. Right. I mean, so one of the things Grant, we had to, we have to ask you this is the portrayal in paradise made it seem as though oftentimes you were the one pursuing lace, right? Like you were the one who was more (laughs) interested in lace. Like, was it being reciprocated? What was it actually like? Right. When you were there, you know, like what, what it was actually like was, yeah, I mean, I did, I did pursue her, but I knew how she felt about me. I just knew how, I knew how scared she was to, to actually, you know, commit to the feelings that she actually had. Right. So I knew that, that, that she was scared and I was trying to facilitate, you know, a situation where, you know, something could work. And I mean, I definitely did, but, um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was definitely mutual the whole time. It's just that, in the beginning, she was very, very scared to actually open up and, and show her feelings, which is understandable. You know, everything yeah. happens really fast. Right. But absolutely. Um, yeah. I mean, it was there was there was definitely some work that I had to put in to get her to kind of um, open up to me, you know. Hey, following so, up on the whole thing with Lace, because it is edited down so much and everything. Yeah. How quickly yeah, yeah. did that thing happen with Chad and Lace? Because they on TV it made it look like <laughs> her and Chad did a thing, and then like the next morning yeah. you were like, "I am in yeah, love with dude. you because I saw you hook up with Chad." <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, it was it was it was funny, dude, because like uh, she she obviously walked down the steps like after I had already gotten there, and there was. We had a long conversation on the beach that like actually was completely cut out of the show because it cut straight to her just hooking up with Chad because that's obviously more entertaining. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, so it was weird because like I made a little connection with her at first and then everybody got super faded and like, you know, I could tell there was a kind of a little dynamic between her and Chad. And I was like, all right, like I'll leave that alone. Like whatever. I'll, I'll go talk to somebody else. So like. Um, yeah, I mean, I, when she started hanging out with Chad, like it, it, it it all happened pretty quick. Like they, they were kind of like talking back and forth and then, you know, that whole segment was, I don't know, it's it's probably, they probably hung out for like an hour or something like that. I completely ignored the whole thing. I was like, I could care less. I'm going to go talk to some other girls like on the beach. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so then the next morning, like super awkward like after the blowout you know everyone's sitting there like chad gets sent home um and then lace obviously there was like this whole thing where like (laughs) she felt super bad and like i didn't i didn't talk to her all day because i was just like whatever like i I don't know what to tell you chad's gone like you know and then she made an effort to pursue me and talk to me like in the middle of the day and then like that's when things started with us you know so there was definitely like a gap in between like when right. we started talking again, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I gotta ask this too, just because obviously <laughs> you and Lace had a thing and all that, but 
I'm just thinking if I'm in that situation and there, you do kind of need to pair up. So uh, as far as things accelerating <laughs> extra fast, right? Don't, isn't it like yeah. to stay on the – that was my first time ever watching that show. So yeah. it seems like if you have a small connection, you're like, yo, are we like getting married? <laughs> you know what I mean? Is that kind of how? Do you, is yeah. there strategy involved? I mean, um, I mean, yeah, I think there definitely kind of is. I, I mean, I, for me, like obviously we 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 had the roses the first week, so I didn't I could care less like what was going on, and I knew that you know, I was fine. Obviously, like I wasn't gonna go home. Like I had a rose to hand out. So it, in my mind, I was like, look, if I don't find anybody I have a great connection with, like I'll give it to somebody. Like maybe the person I think I'll have the best one with, you know. So. Um, I was never, fortunately, I was never in the situation where I was like worried about getting a rose because like I was like with, with her from start to finish, you know? Exactly. You guys had formed a relationship at that point. I mean, so Grant too, what in regards to the tattoo, right? The Grace yeah. tattoo, <laughs> they made it seem one way. If I recall correctly, they made it seem almost like you were pushing for it too. But then when we chatted with Lay, she said that when she got to paradise, she said she wanted a tattoo. So we were like, yeah, no, like that's how the whole thing started, dude. Like she, she, she would always joke around. Like I want to go get a tattoo and it, it had nothing to do with me. You know, this was like week two. Like he was just like, like kind of a joke that escalated into us saying like, like let's just let's just go get one like screw it you know and then that's 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 sort of how it happened you know what i mean it wasn't like uh like i was trying to swindle her into getting like a grace tattoo or anything it was it was like (laughs) an idea that she had that escalated into saying like let's do it you know and for me it's like i have i have a ton of tattoos already obviously right so it's like me getting another tattoo it's like as funny as it sounds like to me it's not that huge of a deal right (laughs) so Exactly. When yeah. I see people Grace, sometimes, it's a, it's a they're like, word. oh my God, like, yeah, it's like, oh my God, what are you going to do about the Grace tattoo? It's like, I'm, just, I'm not really not that worried about it. It's not that big of a deal, yeah. <laughs> you know? It's a, it's a so, positive word. doesn't have to mean Grant Place. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so it's, everyone's always asked me if I'm going to get it covered up or whatever. It's like, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not in a huge rush to, like, if, if I do, I do. If I don't, I don't. But I mean... If I start talking to a girl, if I start dating a girl and her first concern is me <laughs> me having a grace tattoo and having it covered up, chances are she's so far past insecure that I shouldn't even be talking to her in the first place. You know right. what I mean? And hopefully, hopefully her name is Grace and it all works out. <laughs> then exactly. You can say, this right? is your tattoo. She can, just, she can take all credit for it. Now <laughs> accepting ap- applications for girls named Grace. Perfect. <laughs> so Grant, I know what you're on a time constraint. You got to get out of here, but we got to ask you. What is your situation with Lace now? Are you guys still cool? Why did it end? My um, my my theory of why it ended is I think that you guys might have been up for getting your own show and then you found out you weren't. <laughs> That's what I think. Ended. <laughs> <laughs> um, they gave the twins a show and not you guys, and you guys are like, all right, we'll fuck it. <laughs> they actually just found out that they were getting a show like very recently, but um, you know, like we're 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 on good terms we definitely don't talk um we're not on bad terms like if i were to see her at like you know a charity event or something like that we'd probably say hi and that would be it And we probably wouldn't talk to each other the whole time right like it's not one of those things where um there's there's any reason for us to have drama or to try and you know throw shade at each other it's 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 done and it's it didn't work it's not going to work and Luckily, we found that out sooner than later, you know, and I'm 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 grateful for that. You know, I'm glad that, you know, we didn't try and force things to work Um, for me. I just want to be happy. Right. I don't care about about having my own show. I don't care about the exposure. I I don't I don't care about that. You know, Um, at the end of the day, I wasn't happy. And that's why we're not together anymore. You know. Right. Totally fair. Totally fair. So we're going to get you out of here on this one, Grant. I'm sure a lot of the listeners would love to know if you're dating now. I know piggybacking on what we were just talking about, Lace has made some public comments in regards to being shocked at how quickly you moved on. So what's what's yeah. going on in your world right now? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I, I definitely don't have a girlfriend or anything like that. I um, if I if I start to talk to a girl, I definitely um, I definitely take a very slow and, and logical approach with things. Um, I am not closed off or, or closed minded to, to being in another relationship right now. I'm definitely open to it. Um, if I, if I feel like 
I'm dating a girl that's that's not worth losing, then I'm going to be with her. I'm not going to not be with her just because I'm I'm recently single. You know, um, I'm definitely over the relationship that I was in. There's not any any baggage that I'm carrying on into the next situation that I'm going to end up in. You know, um, totally. I'm Grant, in a good place. You know, Grant, I got what is it like dating now that you've been on the show? Because it's obviously oh, God, diff- it's, dude. is it weird when girls it's, know you from the yeah. show? Yeah, dude. I mean, I, I honestly, um, as much as I could date girls that, that kind of know me from being on the show and that are huge fans of the show, um, I avoid it. You know, it's for me, I've, I've been in situations where I can tell that, that the girl wants to hang out with me just so she can tell her friends that she was hanging out with me. As funny as that sounds, you know, it's it's not, yeah, and it's it's not about me being cool or whatever. It's just I I want to date somebody that that isn't dating me for any reason than me. You know, I it's it's not about anything besides that. And so I find it more of a turn on when a girl is like, "Yeah, no, I heard you were on the show, but I could care less. I don't even watch it." I'm like, "That's amazing." <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know somebody was in there for the wrong when, reasons when after you sleep with them, they use your full name. Like, I can't believe I just slept with Grant Kemp. You're like, "All right, uh, that's 100%, weird." 100 percent. Yeah, 100 percent. It's it's not. It's like I I don't want it to be one of those things where it's 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 a thing, and um, that's actually kind of hard to find. You know, um, especially when you know, you're in the situation that I'm in where, yeah, you know, I do model and stuff and I am in LA all the time. And, um, a lot of girls that you meet, you know, they're, they're looking to use somebody as kind of a stepping stone or, or, or to up their status or whatever, you know? And, um, that's, it's unfortunate, but it's, it's the world that we live in. Right. And, and, uh, luckily I can, I, I can see through it pretty quick, you know? Totally, totally. Well, hey, man, we're going to let you get out of here. We do want to give you an opportunity to shout out any social media that you'd like the listeners to check you out on and follow you on. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I started a company. It's called Captive Social. Um, we're a social media marketing agency, and um, we help influencers monetize their pages better, and we help brands start campaigns. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about it. I've been working really hard on it, and uh that's really it. That's dope, man. We'll make sure to include that in our show notes along with like your Instagram and Snapchat, all that good stuff. And again, yeah, Grant, yeah. We, we appreciate the time. I know you recently did an event with the Clothing by Owl crew and you got the chance yeah. to meet Sarah. So yeah, next, yeah, they're awesome, dude. Man, next time we, we do something here and do another live show, you're absolutely invited and we look forward to having you back on the show. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate that, guys. Thanks for coming all on, right, Take care, man. Hey guys, one last thing. On Instagram, make sure to check out and follow our friends at Bachelor underscore Nation, who we've teamed up with along with our sponsors to run giveaways and upcoming promotions, which include Skype dates with previous contestants. Thanks so much for listening. Today's episode of the ENG Podcast is sponsored by our good friends at Clothing by Owl. All you Bachelor fans will recognize this name as they are the company behind the hugely popular Wine Bachelor and Yoga Pants tank top. What you may not know is that they give back a percentage of every item sold to Animal Rescue and that notable Bachelor alums like Jojo Fletcher, Caitlin Bristow, Lauren Bushnell, Ben Higgins, and Nick Vale are all huge supporters. We're happy to offer our listeners 20% off when you visit clothingbyowl.com. Simply add the discount code ENG, that's E-A-N-D-G, to save on all your Bachelor gear. And be sure to follow them on social media at clothingbyowl. Jeff and I are doggy dads, which is why we're so excited to be partnering with our newest sponsor, Puppies Make Me Happy. They have a super simple mission, to make the happiest clothes on earth, which they do. And we know our listeners will love this brand just as much as we do. Plus, we're excited to help spread a little happiness ourselves by offering listeners 20% off all merchandise by using discount code ENG. That's E-A-N-D-G at checkout. Make sure to follow them on Instagram at Puppies Make Me Happy. I'm killing it.